In this video, I'll be using bits of wood that most woodworkers throw in the trash into something that you can actually get in your mailbox. Let's do this! Boom! I have a problem that is progressively eating up the space in my studio. Material pity. I feel pity for throwing away just about any piece of material, whether big or small. I have scraps of plywood, MDF, colored MDF, softwoods, hardwoods and acrylic just everywhere. Boxes, shelves and floor space filled with stupid little pieces of wood that I get nervous about throwing away. Valuable studio space is occupied with scraps to the main door that doesn't even open halfway for years and years. To minimize this issue, I want to use this material instead of filling up an entire street container. So here I am today, forcing myself to use what I saved, just in case. I always start with an idea and this is the first time I have created a project without knowing what I'm going for. In my mind it has everything to go wrong and many of you might agree. So after randomly slicing lots of material into 25mm strips, I thought cutting boards or kitchen boards, serving boards, sushi boards, whatever boards. It's a boring idea, yes, but what's most boring to me is the stripped look. I wasn't feeling it, so I gave up on every preconceived notion of what kitchen boards look like and went for a simple and minimal approach. What I considered most urgent to get rid of was the Baltic birch plywood scraps, so I kept the solid wood for future projects. Once I found a good combination of plywood edges without too many defects, I separated them into 10 boards plus one extra with bad looking wood that will serve as a guinea pig for the following building steps. I introduced a little bit of solid maple to make the outer edges. This will also make them more robust. I could then glue each board together using waterproof wood glue that is also food safe. I clamped them super tightly and waited at least two hours before unclamping them. Then came the satisfying part of scraping the glue squeeze out. I checked the boards for flatness and two were pretty twisted. Since this is plywood and the resin between the wood layers is aggressive on the hand plane blades, I decided to use a small power planer to remove the higher corners. This planer comes with a rectangular dust port, so I taped the vacuum hose to the machine to collect the shavings at the source. Once they were relatively flat, I brought them into the drum sander to make everything smooth. To make things a little more interesting, I wanted to add colored MDF, in this case green, blue, orange, yellow, red and purple Valchromat that I had left over from older projects. I started by cutting a few rectangles that I'll layer up to make thicker blocks of each color. I spread the glue evenly and made blocks of three layers. I was having difficulty keeping the pieces from sliding around when clamping, so I pinnailed them close to the edges. I know it will go to waste later. I clamped everything super tightly and let it dry completely. In the meantime, I utilized my freshly built router table to join one edge on each serving board. This router table was upgraded with broccoli tools and accessories, and I'm very excited about the outcome. I started by changing the bit for a tall, straight router bit, because the kitchen boards were almost one inch thick at this point. It is so satisfying to snap the insert plates in place and not mess with screws anymore. The Promax router table fans comes with two rectangular metal bars on the outfit section that can be turned 90 degrees to bring the fans forward slightly. 
If you align the router bit flute with the outfit fence, you get a jointer position on its side. I ran all the boards through, making sure I was doing pressure on the outfit area once about 10 centimeters of the workpiece were on that side of the bit. I made this procedure because most of the time the clamping can distort a once perfectly straight edge. That's because some clamps apply more force than others and wood fibers along the entire glue up will get smashed differently. Sometimes you get bowed or wavy edges and I did want to correct that. The second edge was cut parallel to the jointed one at the table saw. So, what am I doing with the color blocks? Well, I borrowed the cloud-inspired shape from the baby crib I built last year and merged it into the serving boards. To make them precisely the same, I used my Avid CNC machine that I haven't used in a while. It was great to dust off my basic CNC knowledge and see these colorful clouds come to shape rather quickly. The tricky part was to align the digital drawing precisely with the real blocks of Valkermat. I took measurements of all the spacing between them and drew rectangles in Illustrator that were equivalent to the real ones from which each cloud would be cut. I could import the contraption into VCarve Pro and export the G-code, excluding the rectangles. With the bit size information, depth per pass and all the settings needed to run the job on the CNC. The cuts went great, but the dust shoe brushes got weirdly stuck once the passes got deeper, right on the first cloud. I hate dust shoes that are not independent of the spindle movement. I need to adapt this one somehow, but I haven't got the time yet to do it. I babysat the machine to prevent this from spreading throughout the studio, which didn't take too long. I was relieved to see that my calculations went fine, that no screws were hit and that all the clouds came out perfectly inside each block perimeter. Since the dust collection didn't work as expected, the dust got pressed hard inside the bit pads. It created sort of a vacuum effect that stuck the work pieces against the table. I made a second round of cutting the remaining clouds. I clean up the tabs and had a little moment of joy organizing the colors in a rainbow fashion. Before joining the clouds with the plywood boards, I trimmed them to their final length using my Rockler crosscut sled and stop lock. I could simply glue the components together, but since they will be for sale as soon as this video goes live, I decided to take an extra step and reinforce the joints with dominoes. This way, if the glue bond ever fails, which I don't think it ever will, but if it ever fails on the edge of the plywood or the Valkermat, the long grain of the dominoes should be able to keep the parts together. I'm excited to announce that I have new Gehenna Story products for sale. The new designs were made in collaboration with my sister Sara and are now available on my online shop. I have socks featuring some of my favorite tools, pins with the classic logo and super cute supporter pins exclusive to my Patreon members. Remember the colorful strips I cut at the beginning? I finally got to use them to make bars that will work out as feet. From now on, I'll just call them feet. This will give the serving boards a kind of sushi board look. I glue them together in trios to match the three-layer look of the clouds. While the glue was drying, I ran the boards over the drum sander again. I needed to level the clouds with the plywood area. I drew the clouds slightly bigger on purpose, so I have to trim them now. I can't just lean the board against the fence because of the protrusion on both sides of the cloud, 
so I use a straight scrap of wood to guide the plywood area and keep everything parallel. With one side flush, I could run the second side through the blade normally. To better integrate the feed into the boards, I cut two dados to allow them to enter the material about 6 mm. I kept the router table fans configured to the joining mode, so I ran the lag blocks through the bit to clean up one face. The second face was cleaned with a table saw, where I also cut each foot to its final length using the Rockler Precision miter gauge and fans. The worst part just started for me, which is sanding. I sanded the feet until they fit in the grooves and then glue them. I just remembered that I sanded the bottom face of each serving board off camera before these glue ups when it was easier. Then it was a matter of sanding and sanding and sanding and sanding and more sanding until it was just as smooth as a baby's butt. I vacuumed the dust and used a raw wood cleaner from Rubio Monaco to remove any remaining dust from the surface. While the cleaner was drying, I searched for a thin strip of art maple and prepped the document with a bunch of Get Hands Dirty logos to be cut on the laser machine. I always apply masking tape over the surface when cutting wood because I don't like the smudge burning effect of the laser engraving. So I peel it off and remove all the tiny bits of tape from the center of the letters. All that is left to do is to glue the logos to the back of the serving boards and apply the finish. I use Rubio Monaco Oil Plus 2C since it is a food safe finish that leaves a smooth and hard surface. These are not meant to be cutting boards, so you shouldn't use sharp knives on the plywood, but they are perfectly safe to use as charcuterie boards, serving trays or sushi boards. You can find them on sale in my online shop and only 10 are available. Big thanks to Rockler Woodworking Hardware for supporting my work and all my Patreon members. Thanks everyone for watching and go get your hands dirty. Até já.